You are now listening to The West Side of THAAfterparty.com. Hi, I'm Jess with Kinky Curly Babes Corner. Tune in every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. to learn about natural hair care. Join our discussion on the natural hair community and much more. Catch me every Sunday at 8 p.m. on the West Side of the After Party Radio. See you at the party. Welcome back, everyone, to Kinky Curly Babes Corner. So today, I have a special co-host with me. Um, this is Chioma. Oh, am I not? You can't hear me? Get my life. This All is right. Chioma. Um, you can follow her on Instagram at Chioma underscore. We have her handle over here. If you just yeah. want to introduce yourself and who you are, okay. what you do, and all that good stuff. Well, I am Chioma, but it's all right. I'm sorry. I, but I like the way she said it, though. Like, she put her little freak on it. But um, yeah, I'm Chioma. Um, I'm Nigerian and Guyanese. I love Afrobeat music. Really, really trying to make that a thing in LA. It's really big in New York and Atlanta and Houston. So we're trying to really hone in on it so it could be beyond just BT Award Weekend and all that other stuff. I want you guys to hear Afrobeat music. So I love that and uh, my host parties and I have things that I'm in the works. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Do you want to tell us about some of the things that are in the works? Okay. So one <laughs> thing is one thing is very, very tight-lipped because of all of the um, the paperwork that's involved with it. It's involved with the city and the state government. So I don't want to go too deep into that. But it's, it's to tie into the Afrobeat music and bringing that sound and bringing that force here just beyond a flyer party. I don't know if you guys are familiar with flyer parties, but... You know how people like to have themes, um, costume theme for right this time of year. A lot of people like to introduce different sounds, but only through having it at multiple venues and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it more centralized and easier to access. So that's what I'm really working on, as well as representing for the big curvy girls for... Um, I'm half Caribbean, half African. We eat a lot of ethnic food and we dress a certain kind of way. And I definitely, I'm so sad that I don't have my Ankara clothing on and stuff. I wasn't thinking about it that tough, but I definitely, that's what I do. I, I like to bring my culture with my Los Angeles upbringing flair to the, to the masses. Awesome. So yeah. make sure you guys follow her so you can be in touch with all the stuff that she's working on because um, it's some exciting things. So, um, like, I'm going to make sure I'm pronouncing your name right, because I've been tearing it up, but you it's didn't like correct me. It's like Chioma. Chioma. There you so, go. So, Chioma, when I first met you, mm -hmm. um, one thing that we were talking about, well, we met at a, what was like a networking mixer, type of yeah, deal, mm -hmm. networking mixer. Um, a lot of the people that I meet that inspire me, I always end up meeting them on networking, networking mixers. So, You're the um, plug. I need to go yeah. to <laughs> I need to, I need to, to start having my own because I'm mixer. like, I only knew really? about that one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I didn't I know, oh, yeah. know okay. about like that. We're, we're, we're going to be in touch. I go, okay. to the, I go to them quite often. I actually yeah. like stalk Instagram pages just to find so smart. To, to go, <laughs> ones to go to. But you got to be careful which ones you go to because okay. some of them – can be weird. Okay. <laughs> so since we're talking about weird, I'm going to get we'll on the We'll work topic. on the exit strategy when it's not our flavor. <laughs> so let me, let me tell you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to make this story quick. Okay. Um, but descriptive as possible. So I think it was last year. Okay. I was invited to a networking mixer. Uh-oh. was invited. <laughs> um, they had wine, all that good stuff. DJ was popping. It was okay. cool. I get there. Um, the person that was throwing the mixer was a guy. Okay. Um, tall, very attractive guy, not my type, but okay. he's probably a lot of people types, so not okay. my type, but invites me to the mixer, mixer. Uh, one of my friends was invited too, but she's older, but she was, she didn't want to go cause it was like, okay, it's probably gonna be a young type okay. of thing. Gotcha. I get there. It's mostly, it's just women that are there. Just women. Okay. That's, okay. We've met me an all women one. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's different. <laughs> that is different. Oh, are this, you are you are you saying guy, something without saying something? This this guy invited all these women, and there was maybe like two other guys that were there. So the mixer was so you can take a headshot, and do all this, stuff. but it was weird because the guy, he was flirting. Like you could tell, like maybe these are people that he knew outside of this more Got than you. that. And then so um, this was his tribe of women. Yes. Okay. So then when um 
we had he I mean he came, gave me a hug, like, hey, thanks for coming out. Yeah. But what got weird was it was this girl that kept staring at me the Uh-oh. whole night. So every time he came and talked to me, I was getting a death stare. I'm like, that's one of his little girlfriends. Right. I'm gonna go home and okay. I'm never gonna go to one of these again. Aww. But yeah, so you gotta be careful when you go to networking messages. Man. But anyway, um so like I was saying, when I first met you, um I was intrigued by how deep you are with your culture and mm-hmm. how excited you were to talk about it and explain it, even with your future business ventures. Yeah. Um, and then we got on the topic of what I do, mm-hmm. uh, my brand. Um, I haven't been talking about it lately on my podcast, but my brand, if you follow me on Instagram, is Kinky Curly Babe, Curly with a K. Um, I call myself the crown coach. I educate people on their natural hair. Which I need a lot of help with, just so you know. <laughs> and that's what I'm here for. And um, I teach people how to care for their natural hair and to be confident in their natural hair. Because a nice. lot of us, um, we're not taught. confident. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of it has to do with cultural things. Right. So one thing that you brought up is that, you know, um, African-American, um, Nigerian, mm-hmm. like we're, we're all black. Right. But like there's cultural differences. Right. Um, right, right. So I know, like, for me in the natural hair community, um, the way I grew up when it comes to natural hair, um, well, I mean, natural hair was non-existent, like, for right. me growing up. My, right, right. Like, it was twist. Everybody knows about the Just and For Me campaign. Exactly. And wanted to look like the girls off of Just For Me, like the song. Yep. <laughs> so, like, right. for me, um, growing up, it's like a look presentable, slick mm-hmm. your hair back, right. flat iron it. Right. You go to the pool, you better not get your hair wet. That part? Um <laughs> So I'm curious, like, how was it for you, like, growing up when it came to, like, your hair? Well, interestingly enough, um, I didn't get perms until middle school. I have a crazy story when I got to high school. Um, Growing up, my mom had me in braids. So I had individuals with curly Q twists at the end. Mm -hmm. So I always had, like, two pigtails. They were braided pigtails with curly twists at the end. And um, we wore a lot of head garb so when we went out to um formal occasions um weddings wake keepings which is funerals for us um which are so celebra- we we don't do funerals we do celebration of life wake keepings mm-hmm. so when we growing up doing that going to christenings we always had the full garb on and basically it looked like coming to america and having the head ties on and everything like that um so it wasn't really a big issue um those who came straight from Nigeria or came straight from, we call them fresh off the boat. Not now, that's like a derogatory term now, but back then, it's like the ones you could tell that they just came straight from Nigeria, their accents were thicker and stuff like that. You could tell the ones that came straight from home versus the ones that grew up in America. We call those the ones the Americanized ones. Um, I was definitely Americanized because, again, I came from two different cultures. My dad being Nigerian, my mom being Guyanese, Guyana, South America, not to be confused with Ghana. Um, we had so many different looks going on. So it wasn't an issue per se with the whole natural, have your hair perm straight. But I know that once I went to, because I went to multicultural schools growing up. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't an issue until I went to an all black school. Oh, I know how that goes. And (laughs) when I got to middle school, (laughs) they let me have it. They were like, like African booty scratcher, like what is your name? Wow. Why do you look like that? Why is your chicken head was the popular term? That's the like archaic term for like ratchet, archaic. Like it's, I'm kind of dating myself, but like chicken head was a was a term back then, and like my hair was not long, so I was like I stayed in braids. Like Brandy was my idol growing up. Like that was the only person that could connect with me because she stayed with braids and she had no edges and she felt me like no shade. You have edges now, but I'm saying like back then, like she understood me. Like I got it. Like baby, baby, like the song. I want to be down. When I saw her, I was like, there goes my saving grace. Like there's somebody I can finally Mm -hmm. connect to. Mm -hmm. So I constantly was like, mom, I have to have braids. Like I would not go to school that day just to have my braids taken out the night before and go get my hair braided just to go to school and not have any Uh window of having my hair out because it was too short, according to standards. That's traumatizing. Very. As a child. The worst of it was the day that my mom put, like, a braided 
Like she did this like long braided mm -hmm. attachment to my hair and she wrapped it around and it looked like it was my hair, like it, I was passing. And somebody yelled out like, that's not her. She got a weave. And it was just Kids all are down. so mean. It was all this down. This was in middle school? I, middle school. I went to Audubon Middle School off of Crenshaw and Martin Luther King. Yeah, it was, whew, it was torture. Like, that was the worst. That was the second to worst experience in my life dealing with natural hair. So, it sounds like the way um, you were brought up, it doesn't sound like your parents maybe chastised you about your hair. Right. It was more so when my you got... My environment. When you got around other mm -hmm. African Americans, okay. And I'm not just gonna say African Americans. It was just other well, other other kids my age. Yeah, yeah. They okay. were like letting you know, like you. Mm -hmm. But what's it, wrong that, with your hair? It that ties into how they were brought up too. Because mm -hmm. for me, growing up, it was like you ain't leaving the the, the house with your head looking like that, yeah, looking exactly. nappy type of thing. Exactly. Um. So for me, growing up, embracing natural hair like was never like that's not even a that uh, yeah. topic didn't 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 exist exactly. like you you gonna do what and do what you better <laughs> slick that down you better <laughs> do this you, you better, better have your hair look like that right. you know you need a perm like you know yeah. that's how it was your reflection um, of me in this family and you're not about to go out there misrepresenting us yeah exactly yeah. um so it's <laughs> it's interesting i mean because you're like your culture you're talking about the what is the the head piece that you guys wear oh like you, the gelays but yeah. you know yeah dif different things the head we call it head tie or gelay head tie, um okay. i'm trying to make sure I'm yeah the right growing term. up we had some a covering for the mm -hmm. head that usually matched the ankara or okay. the lace or the the george that we were wearing so it wasn't an issue so much with my community like that wasn't the problem. It was when I was you in the mainstream American I community. See. That's when I got like a rude awakening that I was not up to snuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like this definitely, uh, it is, I don't know. Like, I mean, that's why I wanted you to come on and talk mm -hmm. about your experiences. Because I feel like, like I keep trying to make it seem, in my mind, I feel like mm -hmm. it's more so an American thing than mm -hmm. it is anybody else. Um, I mean, like for African Americans, like when like closer to like slave time, like mm -hmm. they had to press their hair to mm -hmm. look presentable in, in public. Mm -hmm. um, like people, African Americans that were maybe nannies or maids, they right. had to wear their hair a certain way or they had to like braid it back and wear a wig so they don't, you know. Yeah, and if they passed, like if they had a certain mel like lack of melanin in their mm -hmm. skin, they wanted to pass because it was almost like a thing of survival. Yeah. Like if you can pass, you could have a full length life without having to worry about someone lynching you or mm -hmm. coming after your family. Um, I didn't really connect with that part of history, but growing up, I thought that was my history because mm -hmm. that's how we were depicted in school. Like mm -hmm. we're slaves and now we're not. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't until I got older that I was like, my dad was like, well, that is African Americans yeah. history. Our, I came straight from Nigeria. Yeah. So you can trace me back mm -hmm. and you know where your last name's from. You mm -hmm. know exactly where your village you came from. Mm -hmm. All of that. So my mom's side of the family, which is the Guyanese side, in that country there's so many different nationalities. Um, because it was British a British territory. Mm -hmm. So it was British Guyana and we have, I have cousins that look like they're Asian. I have cousins that look like they're straight from India. I have cousins that are charcoal black. I have cousins that are super fair. Um, even, actually, my cousin, she's got over, I want to say, 100,000 followers on Instagram. She's a naturalista, naturally curla. Mm -hmm. um, she, you would never know that we were cousins by really? the way we look. She looks more like my mom. I look more like my dad. Mm -hmm. um, it the cra I feel like yeah, like I said, growing up, the issue to me was more so not specifically belonging to any world. Like yeah, I I'm, came into contact with a woman. She told me it's a term called third culture kid. Third culture kid is if you grow up in one culture, but your parents are from another one, and you're mm -hmm. just trying to navigate through it all. Yeah. <laughs> so I know about, like, if you're around Americans, there's something called personal space. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you want to give them their personal, in African culture, it's like, hey, girl. <laughs> so it's like, I know uh -huh. how certain, when I see certain faces and certain mannerisms and certain movements, I can kind of pinpoint what background that person's mm -hmm. from. And that's from being in three different walks of life. So mm -hmm. I am a third culture kid. I grew up American, but I have this, I have these ties. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, going back to that, 
with my African side, I wasn't African enough. And then with my Caribbean side, I was the African girl. So it was just like, I, uh-huh. I couldn't win for losing growing up. I was just like, do I belong anywhere? <laughs> so that was kind of like how it was for me. It was more so feeling like, do I belong anywhere? Because I'm mm-hmm. everywhere. So I feel like the person that could probably most relate to that are people that are biracial. Oh, yeah. So, like, white and black. Like, you're, you're not black enough to be white. You're not white enough to be black. But you're, you're somewhere in between, and you're trying to make it work. So mm-hmm. that was how it was for me, is, like, where do I belong? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I didn't really catch that until um, I started going to something called Ebo Camp. My tribe, my dad's tribe, Ebo Camp, they used to have it at Cal State Dominguez Hills in Carson. And that's how I got to know more about my culture and mm-hmm. more about people that were like me, at least on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. Um, for five years of my childhood, we lived in Atlanta, and that's how I got to learn about um, curry and roti and the Caribbean side. But like I said, you had to go to those communities to, yeah, learn, to learn it about what they had going on and try to mix it and mm-hmm. make it make sense for you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that's that was life for me. <laughs> so that this, I mean, it's very interesting. Um, I mean, I didn't. For me, my dad was in the military, so oh. I didn't grow up in one place. Right. But I primarily primarily grew up in Hawaii. So oh, wow. there's not a lot of black people there. Wow, it's a mixture. I mean, there if there if there are black people, a lot of times they're mixed. They're like half Hawaiian, um, or they're maybe military brats like I was. Um, so I wasn't around like a whole bunch of other black kids. Gotcha. And then even then, like I didn't, I don't think I ever had the issue of being picked on gotcha. when it came to my hair, when I lived in Hawaii, I probably got picked on, um, cause my dad was stationed in like Augusta, Georgia for a couple years. Gotcha. So I got picked on there. Um, growing up, I hated doing my hair cause I hated getting relaxers. Cause in my mind, like when I was like 12, I'm like, why? Like, I why am I burning? Like, well, exactly. Like <laughs> I gotta make it, this. make it make sense. Jesus, like, I'm I'm burning. <laughs> right. Like, like I got to sit here with this like stuff in my head yeah. for what? So like other people can feel comfortable that my hair is laid. Like and I we didn't even know um, that was what it was about. We didn't even I know. St- I, I, we just knew that we had to do I it. remember, um, <laughs> when I lived, cause my dad was a single parent for a while. So okay. I, I think I started getting relaxers when I ended up moving to Augusta and my grandmother was there. So I would go to the hair salon with her and my aunt. My aunt is like a couple years older than me. Like her and I are like cousins, but so she was like a teenager too. So we would go to the hair salon and I hated this process and I've never understood. I still don't understand why people like it. Even as an adult, I still mm-hmm. can't do this process. Okay. We would go there for perms, like touch up perms mm-hmm. and we would be there all day. <laughs> okay. Cause Six, they got to stop. They got to go pick up the kids. They got to go get food. They have to put their favorite clients in front of you. They got to be like, oh, this person's going to go. They got to go. They have to work tomorrow. You got bumped around a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. It was always an all-day process. So, <laughs> growing up, I, I hated I hated getting relaxers because it burned, for one. Um, I didn't like going to the salon because in my mind, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I, if I sweat this out, like, it's a wrap. So, I done spent, like, six hours here. <laughs> for nothing. And, it, like, and I'm about to sweat it out. Yeah. But, it's okay. So, in agreement with you, I didn't, I wasn't really picked on when it came uh, to hair okay. until I was around other black kids. Okay. Um, when I came to Hawaii, um, I didn't, I don't ever remember being picked on about my hair. For the most part, I played around with my hair a lot. I was okay. dyeing it, bleaching it, shaved head, I did all that. Oh, yeah, no, I was I a thug. I do none of that. Oh, no. yeah. I don't have to. Absolutely. Had the <laughs> <laughs> I, I could not at that's all. My, that's my word. I'm a thug. But so <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't shave. I've been bald like at least four times in my life. My bald was bad. not. Mine was not on purpose. Like, mine was not on oh, purpose. Oh, mine was mine's on purpose. Mine was by accident. Yeah. Really? So. That t- People think I'm crazy every time I tell them that I've shaved my head multiple times. No, mine. But you know what's came funny? Force. The first time, the first time I shaved, I was kind of self conscious, and but I had more guys hitting on me when I was bald than when I had hair. Isn't that weird? Because they're like, I ain't gotta pay for them bundles. So. That's probably what it was. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> she but, easy to deal with. All we gotta do is wear, make sure her outfit is lit, so we good. Like, but yeah. So I in Mama Hawaii. Met her. <laughs> yeah, in in Hawaii, I didn't really deal with people making fun of my hair. Um, but I graduated school from from high school, um, did some college, okay. and then I, I got to the point where I'm like, well, I got in a weird, weird stage of my hair. Okay. 
So I was like, okay, I really don't like relaxers. Like, I'm an adult now. This one was like 20, 21. I was like, I'm an adult. Like, I don't like getting relaxers. Like, that's the age. Like, everybody has an age where they stop doing stuff the parents to make them do. Right. And I got that age. I'm like, I'm grown. <laughs> like, why am I still getting perms? Like, I don't even like perms. Like, so I ended up, at the time I was married, so I ended up um, shaving all my head off, all my hair off, and I ended up, actually, I lied. I got a cute cut. I cut off all my damaged hair, but it was still, like, heat damaged, so it wasn't curling the way it was supposed to. Okay. And then I ended up shaving it all off and just going the natural route. Now, the funny part is, when I was doing the natural hair journey, I had grown A adults making fun of me for going natural. So I got picked on as when I was in going to all black school and then when I was around other adults that were black that weren't embracing their hair, they were making fun of me hmm. for going natural. And it wasn't until like I was consistent with it till I was like three, four years in, they're like, Oh dang, like you still it's natural. Not that bad. Right. Yeah. So um it's it's I mean, it's very interesting like hearing your story because our like our our we had a different life, type of parallel. Like, compl- like yeah. it's, it's similar, like but different. Yeah. But different. Like yeah. you, like I, like I didn't go to school where it was a whole bunch of black kids. Mm-hmm. Like I did for like a couple years, mm-hmm. and like I, I, I mean, I get it. Like we, like sometimes, like within the black community, we are our own enemies sometimes because we like to make, we like to make fun of each other, and it's like we roast. But that stuff, <laughs> like we roast. <laughs> that's what we do. That we we learn that. That's how you have to become tough. Like, like middle school else. is a defining age, I feel like. You're either oh, yeah. going to be the sweetheart, the super thought, the one who gets a kid, or the one that just kind of like stays below the radar. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing, when you was talking about the shaved head, it brought me to the story that made me, because I was like, there were three different stories I wanted to share with you about my natural story, like my natural journey, because it was just off the chain. Um, in high school, I... Uh-huh. Ended up getting a hairstylist that I would go to every time to touch my hair up. Sorry, I know. It's no, like, that was just a lot of, of, lot of hair. Um, and this particular time, I was like, I want to have color. My little sister was rocking braids that were blonde. My little sister was light skinned. So she was just like, she was just like doing her thing. And I was just like, I only do dark black or brown. I've never done anything else, so I'm going to go all out. And I went to a uniform oh high school. So oh my gosh, I already when know we had, this yeah, we had senior week. So that senior week, we had theme weeks, and they're like, okay, we had denim day, jersey dress day. Yeah, it was that era. And um, we had all these what different themes. Um, ooh, girl, you going to put me on blast <laughs> like that? Because I'm trying to. <laughs> like, when was it cracking? When was jersey dress a thing? Uh, jersey I'll dress. Just, why is, she, why is she making it like she going hard? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to calculate. Like she, I was trying to go. Mind. I was going. I was okay. trying to go fast past you that. Saw how but she just ignored talk, what I because I'm trying right? not to get my age. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. like no, we're gonna make this age come out. I'm gonna let it pass. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were the same age, but we're not. But <laughs> no, cool. I'm deaf. Oh. No, I seriously thought we were about the same age, but it's cool. That's a compliment. Okay. <laughs> you all come. Shay. Shay, but we not, though. But we not, like, I thought no, we I, were, I, but we're not. I'm, I, old, I really, I'm younger. No, but, um. <laughs> <laughs> let me let you finish. Let me live, though. Um, you remember the song Air Force Ones? Oh, dang. Da- girl, you ain't even got to say, you see how she going ham? That's it. That's all I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you nothing more than that. But, okay, stop. Bro, like, okay. I, in, <laughs> I don't stop, even think I was in stop. middle school. Stop. You're doing too I'm much. Down, You're doing too much. Woo! Bring it back. Wow. Okay, shade. Okay. But okay, whatever. I'm not tripping. It's all right. So anyway. <laughs> I just want to let y'all know that our engineer got us laughing. So we laughing at her too. No. Why we... <laughs> Cause she's she back was like, here wow, dying. when did yeah. that song come out? Like, was I still a Gerber baby? Like, damn. I was playing it. Shade. Back. But anyway, but anyway. <laughs> So that's why we were wearing jersey dresses, okay? Because the backup dancers were wearing jersey dresses, and they were dancing their Air Force Ones. So, like, don't shade us. And whatever. So anyway, I was like, okay, I'm about to. zooming on my face? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm hey, sorry. <laughs> so, at the time, I want to say, oh, I was, I had a high school sweetheart. He was from Detroit. So, I was wearing a Detroit Pistons jersey dress. And I was like, oh, I want to have red hair to match the Detroit Pistons. I mean, I, I know that's one of their codes. Don't ask me what their codes are now, but I knew that was one of their codes. And I was like, I want my hair to be red and my dress. And I had my all white Air Force ones on. I'm, I'm so excited. And it Ended up being like an orange when I had 
maroon hair at the bottom. So I'm over here like, Mom, it's not working out. Like it's it's looking like four different tones. It it was insane. It was it was bad. So it was like gold, yellow, orange, and then red. And I was just like, we gotta fix this. We gotta fix this. You and know that, that would have been popping now, but back now, then, back then, <laughs> no, not at all. So um, for whatever reason, my hairdresser she was able to blend it out and make it look like an ombre effect. Right before I knew ombre was a thing. Now, when you take somebody and her mom that don't know how to do none of that and go home and say, oh, just wrap it. You just, all you got to do is wrap it. It's going to be fine. My mom doesn't know anything about wrapping. I don't know anything about wrapping. I slept on it. It was like a poof ball the next day. So I was like, oh, my like, mom, my texture is like bushy and my hair is like straight. Like, make it, make it make sense, mom. Like, fix it, fix it. And she was just trying to fix it. And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, permit. That was it. Like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I already know what happened after that. <laughs> so, so I know. Oh you, I, all I God. remember was that we were watching the movie Fame. And I'm like, I'm going to live. I have this perm in my hair. Just my front. The rest of the weave is still back there. So I'm all like, oh, my God, this hair is going to be lit. Like, it's going to be straight. I'm so excited. And my mom's like, okay, are you burning right now? I was like, no, beauty is pain. I'm not burning. I'm going to creep this in my hair. No, Mom. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, okay, no, no, it's time to take it out. So we go under the sink. And she puts my hair underneath the um, the faucet, and she just starts screaming. <laughs> I'm like, "Ooh, this hair!" I was like, "For whatever reason, oh my, my head feels really smooth. Like I can feel the water on my scalp. Whoa, like this feels really you lost good. That much hair." My mom was like, "It's out of your, your hair," and I just was like, "Huh?" Because the water is drenching my face, so I don't know what's going on. All I know is that like the water felt really cool and smooth, and I was just like, "Ooh." This feels good. Like, I've never felt the water, like, directly on my head like that. This is, I don't know what she's doing, but she's doing a great job. And she pulls back, like, ah, ah, And my dad's like, what happened to her? And then that's when I was like, what? And then, so when I the hit accent. back, first my head hit the faucet. <laughs> then I pulled back out, and I'm like, ah, So it was, and it was, like, the way the wig, the way the hair was, it was a U-shape. So it was a, the weave was here, and then it was, all this was out. Mm -hmm. All my leave out, mm -hmm. and then it was coming back around. I had straight bald in the front and a whole, oh my God. what do they call those things? A mullet in the back of weave. So I'm sitting here like, how am I supposed to go to school? What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I, so, I can't go to so school. So what did you do? What, so what, what ended do? up happening was my mom put a bandana on my hair. Now, mind you, I went to school in Compton. So there was no way they were going to let me live with a bandana on my head all day. Like, they would, when kids would wear any bandanas, they would, like, the people, the guards would just pull the bandana off the kid's head or a hat off the kid's head. You're not allowed to wear mm -hmm. a main thing to cover your head. So my mom had to go with me to school the next day, go to the dean and say, hey, my daughter cannot go to school without this on her head. She has to keep this on her head. And the lady's like, why? No, we have a strict policy. Then my mom took off the bandana and she's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to write her a special note that, she, that you don't have to take this off the whole time wow. until my hair starts growing back. I just remember walking through the crowd and one of the guards reaching for my bandana and one of my homegirls snatching their arm away so that they wouldn't uh -huh. unmask me. So I ended up like wearing a closure that connected from the back of my wig to the front. So I, that's when I started wearing bangs. That's how I started wearing, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I started wearing bangs. And that's what that was. So for the rest of my high school um, um, career, I was wearing bangs on my head and covering my sides, and my hair was not growing. It was never matching up. It was like, it was like Gumby. Like, I don't, it was... You Child. know what? Because you you making me like think back of some traumatizing um, stories. So I, I got one, and okay. I I was in high school. <clears throat> this is when my dad he was stationed in Korea. Uh -huh. So I remember this, I was getting relaxers. How old was I? I think I was like 15, 16 maybe. I told my mom I wanted to dye my hair. Uh -huh. So she dyed it, and like for whatever reason the box dyes. I don't know if this is a problem for everyone, mm -hmm. but like when I used to use box dyes, I would have to go back and dye it twice because it'll never, it was never no matter enough. how long I kept it, it in, it would never take fully. It would never take fully. Mm -hmm. So I went and did it again because I wanted at the time I wanted my hair to be um, like an auburn color. Oh yeah, you was a daredevil. Yeah, so <laughs> I told you I'm a thug. So. <laughs> 
um, did that. But see, that's not when my hair fell out. So my mom. <laughs> she said, so my mom. She did. She used to do our perms. She used to do, she helped us do the box perms. She did my box perm. And I remember, like, it was a weird smell. Mm. I had, it was not as bad as yours, but I had no edges. Like, all my edges were gone. Oh. So, luckily, like, I had to wear my hair, like, in my face. And then, so like. So, you seen, like, when I'm seen kids? The what Emo? Kids? The emo kids? Oh, yeah, I guess. Like, That's how I, You but know how to comb it, over? Yeah, like, it, it took, like, a couple months before I could even brush my hair back. Ooh. But, like, all my edges were gone. And then my hair was, like, I probably lost, like, an inch of hair mm. because it was, like, breaking off. But, like, ever since then, like, if I, if I um, colored my hair, I just wouldn't, if I, I wouldn't relax it. And if I did, I would just do, a ki- like, kitty relaxer because it wouldn't be as strong. And then it would just loosen up my curls just so I can flatter my hair. But Got you. mine's definitely not as trauma- traumatizing <laughs> as your story. Like, that is real bad. But it yeah. makes me, like, think how, like, even growing up, like, like, people don't, like, I feel like our parents, well, my parent, my mom didn't know nothing about hair for her At to be. At all. Uh, unless a, your people are her in my hair. Unless your mom is, like, the fire cook. My mom's a really good cook. Fire cook, hairstylist, makeup artist, they nail tech. They don't know what they're doing. If they, if they, they, they only know they their know. lane. They don't know any other lane. That's exactly. why they have a whole bunch of homegirls because this homegirl does this. This homegirl does that. This homegirl makes sure that you don't get laughed at the club because she's like your stylist. So everybody knows their role. And my mom's role was definitely not hair. So, yeah. My <laughs> mom either. I was in there thinking like, and I remember after that because I, like, I was like 16. So I'm like, in my mind, like my mom, I'm not ever letting her touch my hair ever again. Right. After that, I was like... Bless my mama heart. Like, she's... My mom's Caribbean. I had African hair. She, it wasn't... She was... It was never... No. Nah, it wasn't her lane. Like, it wasn't her lane. She's like, what is this? It's like a white woman who has a mixed kid. It's like, what is this? I don't know. You know what's funny? So. Like, now that you say that, I've had min- multiple times where I've been in a beauty supply store and uh-huh. see a white woman with her mixed child asking like, me about my hair. But asking about my hair because yeah. my hair... Your hair looks like my daughter's hair. Can you please help me? Because I don't know what I need to do. Right. Um, right. So, uh, <laughs> with that being said, we didn't. It sounds like both of us done had some traumatizing stories. Um, my saving grace, though, was, was in college. Because what ended up happening was when I went off to college, mm-hmm. obviously it was an hour away from home, mm-hmm. hour from LA. I went to UC Riverside, and I would have to come back home to get my hair done to go back to school. Mm-hmm. So this one particular weekend, my godmother was doing my, she was the one that was doing my hair. She was not picking up her phone. She was just not answering. I was devastated. I was like, I lived in the black hall at school and I did not want to walk around with my hair looking crazy. And so I was like, mom, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go to school for a week. Like, I'm, I'm, she's like, this is college. You can't do what you did. <laughs> we can't do that. Like, like, like you're paying for this. Exactly. Like, you, you paid like, for college. You are going to go to school, so <laughs> yeah. you tried it. Sorry. Uh. And so I was like, what am I going to do? So she's like, we're going to put a wig on your head. And wig culture was just for, like, the old ladies in church, nobody else. Like, mm-hmm. nobody was rocking wigs. So I did this back in 2005. So I was like, oh, my gosh. This, 2005. Okay, wow. No one asked you to repeat. Like, she's so shady. Do you feel, this is the second time she shaded me today. You was in All college right, in 2005? You know what? Wow. <laughs> Y'all know what you Wow. I graduated high school wow. 2000. Wow. We're, nice. still, we're still on it, huh? We're still doing that. That's what we do. But you Why look you great. I definitely, fingers, I definitely thought okay, we were about the same Okay, because we don't age, crack. Okay, but, but we, we definitely I'm not don't. at that age where we're talking about what don't crack. We're, I'm not at that age yet. So don't. don't I said, you me. said that. I'm I didn't say that. I'm just like, you look great for your age, whatever that is. Is. Like no, I'm not. I'm not up here yet. I still yet. don't know how old like, you are, but I have we'll a roundabout. We'll leave, and that's to. We'll go to the. It doesn't matter. Though. I'm 21 with a lot of years' experience. Yeah, <laughs> I stole that from Lala Milan, but she's like, I'm 20 because she just turned 30. So she was like, I'm 21 with a couple years of experience. That's all that is. So that's what I am. <clears throat> and um, you feel 21. That's all that matters. Exactly. I feel 24. I'm old enough to I'm buy you a drink. That's all though. you need to know. Okay. <laughs> Mm. That's when I'm gonna start telling people mm. at the club. And when they're like, "How old are you?" I'm old enough to buy you a drink. That's it. That's all you got to know. <laughs> Period. Okay. Period. But saving grace. What was the saving so grace? So the saving grace was we went to the um, the beauty supply store, and she slept. I found a wig that reminded me of the wig. I mean, the wig that had to be constructed on my head from that that 
bang thing because I was like, I don't want to wear a wig where everybody could tell I'm wearing a wig. Like, I can't. So these these bangs actually had, it was from the the lady Beverly Johnson. She was the one that was pushing those. You would see it in the Black Hair magazine. Beverly Johnson always had an ad. It had a natural scalp in it. Magazines. So this was, yeah. You like see her face? You talking about magazines? Wow. Uh, mag- like Magazines. <laughs> What's that meme with um, Soulja Boy? Magazines. No, I'm just joking. Go ahead. <laughs> we, we, you're not going to, okay. I'm, okay. But this I'm is, this is an I'm interesting story, though, because I, I do, back she during that time, me, wigs like, were definitely not a thing. Don't act like you never know. What is it? That, what, the archaic term for flipping pages with pictures on it. Don't, she's, why is she trying to play me? Like, she doesn't know what a magazine is. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, I remember Beverly seeing her in um, these uh, magazines, and so I was like, oh my gosh, she makes these uh, wigs. Of course, it's really an Asian company that just spoke, paid her to be a spokesperson. But this wig had a natural scalp on it. So before they were talking about lace fronts, they've been out. Lace fronts been a thing. Mm-hmm. So all the people, the white women that you see in these movies, they all had these lace fronts. They've been rocking lace fronts. But we late when it comes to lace fronts. So, like Lord of the Rings, the elf with the, you know, that's a lace front. So, <laughs> so when I saw this thing with a natural scalp, I threw it on my head because I was like, oh, my God, we got to be, like, in the back of the beauty supply because if people come in, they're going to see me with no hair on my head. So I threw it on, and I was like, I looked at the Asian lady, like, does it, does it look like it's my hair? And this guy walked in, and he's like, are you mixed? I was like, I'll take it. Uh. I'll take it. <laughs> he thinks I'm mixed. I'll take it. That means he thinks it's mine. Let's go. So that's how that ended up. So I ended up wearing every single color in that wig line because back then human hair was actually human hair, not a poly blend. So it wasn't synthetic, half human. Yeah, I was going to say. Because right now they can do that uh-huh. where it only has to be 10% human hair and it could call it human hair when really it's a synthetic human hair blend. Mm-hmm. So back then it was 100% human hair. The hair was down to my waist and the bangs were like perfect. It was pop. Only $75. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how much was that back $75. then? $75. You get something like that now. That's We're like not a talking about the year that it came out. We're not. But I'm just saying. So what you... Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'm just joking. I just like playing with you. It's funny. <laughs> so I was like, $75. 70, that's cheaper than getting your hair done. So I didn't have to buy the hair, the tracks. I didn't have to buy pack hair, nothing. I just used to go in, act like I was like queen of the land. I would come in there looking like a popper, like, oh my God, will you spare any bundles? <laughs> to slapping on the hair, walking out like, yes, um, this is me. I'm actually half Caribbean and African, so that's why you see this texture. I was a hot mess. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was like, I did the with thing. Literally, for a little my bit whole too. life changed after that. I got treated like I was the nerd growing up. You got treated differently because you. Yes, like, because that's, they, but that shouldn't even have been sad, a thing. But that but. was really the thing. Like, I went from being the n- nerdy, tall African girl to. Oh, she got hair down and here she's lit. Like people were all in my face all mm-hmm. of a sudden. I didn't even know I was thick until after I got a wig. Is that weird? <laughs> yeah. Because no one was checking for yeah, me. Yeah, that's before. weird. <laughs> no one was checking for me. Nobody was honking their horns at me. Nobody was checking for me. No one was following me on Instagram, my face. None of that. Don't start. Don't even don't Did go you with say my space? Why is she <laughs> My space? We're done. So this is my first and only interview. <laughs> we definitely gonna have and you FYI, on And FYI, MySpace, I had 150,000 fo- friends on MySpace, the place for friends. MySpace. So I, was I don't even remember like I what, was what back were in the people day. doing on MySpace. You know what? Right? No, I'm serious. Like, I'm I had thing, a, I had a MySpace. The same thing they're doing now. The same thing they're doing now, which is scrolling and making a top eight. Why is she trying to play me? Right? She's like, "What is a top eight? Stop." So anyway, I don't even remember what a top eight is. <laughs> no, if we keep it, I'm keeping it a buck. If we keep no, it a okay. buck. I don't remember the top eight. A top eight. But to to match yeah. your story, um, when I got tired, because I had a image before I went natural, I. Before I went natural, I was doing the wig thing, too, because I got tired of the relaxing thing. And then I, I, I take that back, because at work, I work with a whole bunch of um, Asian girls. So they're, oh, Jess, you should fly on your hair. I don't want to fly on my hair. I'm like, let me just throw a wig on. Yeah. So for a little bit, I was doing the wig thing. And that was fun. Now, I don't know why. I think it's because I've been natural for so long. Uh-huh. I don't care for the wigs. Okay. Um, but I think it, for me, it's like a hot, constricting type of thing, because like, I work out, too. Mm-hmm. I'm a gym rat. So I, I feel more comfortable right. with braids or like twists or something like that. I prefer not to do the wigs now. But this is how I got but, into this. 
Cause yeah. this is a but wig. I've seen so. uh, yeah, I've seen the the wigs with the braids. Those are yeah, cute. But, but I don't. Not I don't everybody. Like, not all of them. Are, uh, not all are created equal. You know, yeah. some of them are a hot mess. The um, this one's from Crisscross Braids, like the rap group Crisscross. Mm-hmm. Crisscross wigs. She's uh, I think she's based in Long Beach. She's local. Oh, um, she she's an African American girl and she made makes this. Oh yeah. wow! So she makes it and she even makes um lock wigs. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. I'll show you guys after. It's yeah, you need, to, lit, you need to get her like, information. Super lit. Cause something you like definitely that have is to interview cute. her because her she, lit, lit, lit. Uh, you, look I'm at you. you. Lit. Okay. Yeah, she um she's amazing, and she makes it super dense. If you hold on to it, it's a dense. It's not like a thin. Yeah. You know how sometimes you have a wig and it's super thin mm-hmm. and it's flat. This one, no, it's dense. So yeah, she's really big on that. She's amazing, and um, I just didn't want to have to be. Heavily dependent on getting unicorn colors and hair. I was I haven't done any unicorn yet. I, I don't know. I'm just not into it. I think that's I think that's behind my age. But literally, I just wanted to do something different. Like you can still be a naturalista even if you don't know everything that you know. Of like course, you can be yeah. a protective stylista because that's what mm-hmm. I'm wearing is a lot of protective styles. Um, and that's kind of what I'm the wave I'm on right now is wearing a lot of protective styles. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something that anybody can do in between getting their hair done and messed with and processed and all that is getting a protective style wig. I'm trying to get better with that. For me, I was doing a lot of, when my hair was much longer, okay. I was doing a lot of manipulation and mm-hmm. bleaching and I was messing it up. So I'm trying to get my hair back to where it was at um, by doing more protective styles and not playing with it as much. So I can definitely yeah, relate definitely. to that. But we got to link up because yeah. I want to wanna help you with your natural hair too. So when you feel like wearing it, uh-huh. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! Popping with a wash. When that day comes. Um, when that day comes. But uh, <laughs> we definitely uh, do. We have time to have people call in. I'm not sure if, if anybody uh, would want to call in. I'm not sure, but I'm having so. a great time, guys. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, why does somebody really? Why does somebody comment? I remember the Air Force Ones. Y'all not gonna come for me. That's what y'all not finna do. That's funny. That's what y'all not finna do. Okay, like I remember Air Force Ones. Like it's like you guys are making it seem like it's not. <laughs> Air Force are still in the store. Like, why are y'all acting like they're you know not why, though. in the, the Air store? Air Force ones kind of just oh kind of came God. back again. I'm not but that's because everybody so. wears y'all them now. They wear them with, like, me. I was in the store the other day. This girl had, like, a dress on, uh-huh. and she was wearing Air Forces. And it, and, it, and it bothered forces, your spirit? Like, yeah, because the, the, I would have got roased when I was first, a kid but you, for wearing you a dress and forces. You notice how all the weird crap that they're wearing? Like, they're wearing, like, There's stuff kids wear today that I would get with fun, Air Forces. I would get made fun of in school for wearing stuff like that. Let's get into the fact that people are wearing, like, orthopedic shoes and putting Balenciaga on them. Oh, like, let's yeah. get into that. Yeah. Because when that shoes first dropped, I was like, that's, like, the orthopedic shoes. Yeah. Like, that's... My grandmother or even would wear those. Skechers like, is a thing too. I yeah. I had some Skechers when I was a kid, and when I tell you, I got roasted so bad. Man. So I saw a kid with some Skechers, some clean Skechers, and a, a clean ass fit. I was upset. I was like, if I wore that, <laughs> I was wearing in school, Eddie Bauer, Old Navy. I don't know uh, who Eddie Bauer is. You are not about to play <laughs> with me today. <laughs> Eddie, who's she's Eddie been Bauer? racking on me like, but she has. Mild, and I'm not even. And she, she thinks I'm doing it on purpose. With a I'm mild not. tone, so it's even worse. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> what is? What is Eddie Bauer? Whatever. Anyway, but I was rocking all the brands, and now they're like, they're coming back, and I was like, if I had known, I would have held on to them. But yeah, like literally, even Von Dutch is back. Von Dutch is back. It's back. It's on Melrose. It's back, girl. I wanted Von they, Dutch. The store is back open. Never, well, oh, it's back open. It's back open. Like, it's, but it for real, they must have just just became a thing because I seen they brought anybody. it back. And anything that is arc and Fila got brought back through Fendi with their collaboration. Um, yeah, Fila is back. Reebok is back. Yeah, I've been Champions. seeing a lot of Reebok. Champions has you know their own couture store. You know they used to sell Champions in Walmart? Them the, hoodie, girl, them sweatshirts that they be wearing. They used pay to less. It was in a swap meet. It was and, in everything. <laughs> and how much? Champion, it's now, like 50, 60 bucks for Yes. Us. If you want a Champion, you, they even have a Champions like customized bar where you could go and put a whole bunch of like, you know, Tags on a shirt, you know and what? they'll be like it ends up being like a two hundred dollars shirt of just champions. Like, I, I can do champions with like 
a sharpie marker. I got you. Like I don't yeah. need to do all. I'm that. not. I'm not, I don't plan on buying champions in this last lifetime simply because yeah. it was so cheap when I was a kid. I'm not gonna rebuy it. It's, it's just disrespectful for you to have yeah, to pay it for is. something that like, you got ragged on for. You know, because that's the only thing I get. Not buying sketchers because she got ragged on for that. You know, she got ragged for on what? The, for that, and she's she's for upset the champion about, or yeah. the sketchers. I don't know which one won. Like, oh. remember when Kim Kardashian was like a spokesperson for sketchers? Like she was, was trying to make that. Yeah, the, you know the little. Step, step ups or shape ups? Oh, you're talking about them things that's supposed to help your buns? Yeah, your something? feet, and they end up being bad for your feet. But yeah, like all oh, those that's throwback why the styles. Yeah, end up being, yeah, it was really bad for your feet because it had your feet okay. at an angle. So it was messing up your foot over there time. There was a girl at work that had them. She had some. Um, Africa wasn't a girl, it was my boss at the time. She had some, but she had like the water. I worked at Taco Bell when I was a teenager. This is when I was a teenager when that thing was a thing. So she had the shoes, <laughs> but they were like the, what is it called? The skid proof ones? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, she, and I was looking at her, I'm like, you really bought them stupid shoes? I just remember wanting to be like one of the Spice Girls with the soda pop shoes. Like there was some triple decker shoes. I wanted a pair of those and my dad said, oh, so you I, were around back then? I was, but my Shade. dad said out those shoes were grown. Because guess what? My dad said those shoes were grown, so I wasn't able to get them but now that i'm an adult i want because guess what air force ones was, that song was around then too so shade you weren't i don't gerber. even you weren't oh, gerber i don't though, even know but you weren't gerber though see i didn't you see i, I never tried to downplay me like if you were into spice girls you were into air force ones because it came around the same time fubu no i think those are different no don't try no i know this i was there you was an adult <laughs> that's why <laughs> <laughs> I'm I still trying to connect. School. I'm trying to connect the dots. No, Shame. I was in middle school. She said you were an adult. Like you were paying taxes. No. <laughs> oh, okay. But we only got a couple minutes left. Okay. Um, I just want you to share your social media and where everybody can find you at. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Chioma underscore. So it's spelled C H I O M as in Mary A underscore. Very simple. Awesome. Make sure you guys follow her. I'm hoping I can get Chioma. I pronounce her name right. I've been tearing her name up she like gave me three times. She, she made me chai chi latte. She didn't even cool. correct me, it's which is right. funny because no. when people tear my name up, you be quick with it. Like, snatch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't take offense when people correct Do me. Do you when understand I mess up their name. what the first day of school like was my whole academic life? I wish so, I would. It's not that I deep. go by they, as soon Jess, as they got mine to the is o. Jess Ree. So I either oh. get called Jessica. Jeffrey, if I'm over the phone and they don't see me, it's Jeffrey. And the drive throughs it's like, okay, Jeffrey, Jeff. And then I get there like, oh, yeah, you're not Jeff. No, I'm not Jeff. <laughs> There's been times I've called and placed orders, and then I go and pick up the order, and it says Jeff on there. This girl, she saw me. She was like, for Jeff? I was like, no, Jess. <laughs> and then she got the order. And she's like ripping off the paper. Shout like, I don't the, see that she put Jeff know, on it. Shout but. out to all the girls that have our type of voice. Because, I mean, I have a deep voice too. Deanna Taylor, Mazika Kalisha. We have them deep voices. Mm -hmm. And yes, we can pass for both. Don't even hate on it. But uh, <laughs> be having to correct people. It's ma'am, right? not sir. Right, right. Like, my uncles and aunties used to go ham on me. They're like, oh, I thought you were your brother. And I was like, no. That's messed up. No. It was like, yeah, you're growing you? up. You're growing up. And I was like, no, you just tried to shade me, auntie. Like, you literally thought I was my brother. <laughs> you tried it. And the but fact right. that you repeat it with the accent makes it that much fun. Because, because <laughs> they're like, is this, it's like, is I this have the boy? Yeah, I, is this the first born son? It's not. It's not. It's the middle girl. Oh. <laughs> oh. You sound like you're growing up. Like, don't even, you try to save it, but it's too late. You said I sound like a guy, but it's all right. It's cool. I didn't have them type of issues. With no, I did. They, I did. I did. But, I did. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, make sure you guys follow her. <laughs> Chioma. Yeah. I want to say Chai, cause, but it's Chioma. Yes. And follow Kinky Curly um, Babe. Follow the after party. Okay, with a A. And the, we have to make sure the, we get her as a co-host. Okay. Again on Oh my here, God, I would love I to love do it. Energy. You guys were so lit. This um, was fun. Definitely I a love lot of you fun. guys. You're great. And um, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. I'm going I'm to plug you into all those people because you definitely need Yeah, I definitely those need her information. People. Yeah. Um, so I can hear up because I, I might want a wig. Okay. Like, and it's a protective style so you wouldn't be going against what you do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we out we though, right? We minutes. did it good. Awesome. Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> For the coming. old lady can hang. Old lady. Still nameless, Kenny lost me when I touch bases. Ask 
Who your bitch wanna see famous? Who can do better when you're made? Who can do better when you're Touch bases. Ask when your bitch wanna see famous. Uh, this gon' be the day. You first.